All right, let's play some PS2 games. Let's get into let's get into the PlayStation 2. Have you heard of this? It's uh it, it's sweeping the nation. Uh, everyone's got PlayStation 2 fever. And uh I've got a couple of games here that I've just been thinking about lately that I thought might be fun to mess around with. Brad Beer's Alter Echo. new game from THQ that truly I like it when the, the game industry. itself tells you that it's innovative. As Nevin, the player must fight for survival against a hostile planet whose very surface is alive. With non-stop action and a groundbreaking visual style, Alter Echo stands apart from other action titles, allowing the player to morph between three unique combat modes and manipulate time with a pioneering gameplay feature called Time Dilation. To ensure that Alter Echo would be an unparalleled experience, the developers at THQ Studio Outrage Games stacked the deck with stunning visuals, highly adaptive gameplay features, and cutting-edge technology. The design team started by creating a completely original world, an organic sci-fi fantasy world that would act as a character within the game, providing challenges and surprises at every turn. It was a very, very um, conscious decision to not make a game set in reality so that we have to play by those rules. We wanted to kind of just flex our muscle and do something as different as we possibly could. The, the, the level is essentially a character to the player, an alter echo. So as an experience, you're fighting it, it's moving around. You're fighting enemies and things like that, but you're also fighting the world itself, which is very cool. Now creating that is a complicated endeavor because when we animate the environment- That guy jumped in a hole because the level, the world was too alive. Kind of skeletal underpinnings, it's got the same kind of movements. It's just as complicated. Just having it be organic takes it to another level and is, it's a very challenging thing. With a visually distinct playground in place, the next challenge was to bring as much originality and imagination to the tactical combat in Alter Echo. Using an advanced real-time skeletal morphing system, the team gave their main character Nevin the ability to morph between melee, gun, and stealth forms during combat. The morphing, which allows the player to change on the fly between different characters, essentially, is pretty unique. No one has really pulled off the ability to interpolate meshes before in a real-time context, and it allows for just an unbelievably wide and it's variety pretty sick. of play moves. Inspired by action sports games, Alter Echo brings an innovative combo system to the action fighting genre, allowing the player to chain moves and combine forms into explosive special attacks. The action fighting genre is an interesting concept. The combo system allows you to, uh, for individual players to kind of customize the way they approach an individual combat situation. While you're chaining, uh, Nevin's actually getting stronger, so a player who's doing it correctly will actually have a strategic advantage over a player who's just trying to hack and slash through the level. The gameplay icing on the cake came in the form of time dilation technology, a rhythm time dilation mode technology. which allows players to freeze time. Time dilation is this um, this kind of really strange, amazing mini game in Alter Echo. Nevin has the ability to control time with this Echoplast suit to a limited degree. So he can freeze freeze time, and then through this mini game, you can queue up all sorts of different attacks on the enemies that are around you. And then you see this great um, this great playback of all these 
these awesome moves that you get to see executed with Time Frozen. THQ's Alter Echo launches players into a bizarre... Alright. I mean, we can play the game, too. No. Uh... I remember enjoying this game, or at least thinking that it had... In the year 2850 AD... There's something to this game. The combo system, there's, there's like stuff about this game that is, is actually pretty cool. Um, innovative, perhaps, one might say. Even spaceships. But it's only found one place. Proteus. Whole damn planet's made of it. That's why we needed a shaper like you, Nevin. I know all this. What's our mission? You ever hear of a shaper named Pavo? Oh, come on. He was just the most brilliant shaper of all time till he died. Our company faked his death. Set him up at a remote research post on Proteus, where he's been three long years, designing the plastids that made IMS rich. Two months ago, he began an experiment to create a new radical multiplast with supercharged biocircuitry. That's impossible. That's impossible! He reported success three days ago. Called the new stuff Echoplast. But then, he sent this transmission. Oh, humanity, I reserve my disgust. And so I have become discarnate, separated from the flesh without human body, subsumed by new flesh as its voice and shepherd. That's really nuts. <laughs> so we've got a lunatic sitting on the century's most precious discovery. No sign of Midas post, just that tower. Three little lambs to the slaughter. Oh no. I just love killing things. And I just love that you love it. Eject! Are you fucking? Whoa. That dude was going to cuss. I know it. What the hell? I'm still alive? With a sword? Alive. Who is that? You were falling, and I saved you. Okay, you have my thanks, but who are you? I'm Nevin. We have to hurry. What's with this sword and the suit? I will teach you how to use them. I'm real glad to be alive and everything, but this is actually much weirder than dying. The the UI and stuff, it like the, the, the things that stick out to me about old games is like the text size in those cutscenes. Like how big it is, how big all the UI elements are, and and oh, we we have got to. Nope, that didn't fix it. It they, you can only change it on the Y axis. You can't. The right stick is backwards, like Ratchet and Clank used to be before they came to their senses. Oh, I hate this. This is one of the things that's one of the hardest things for me to go back to about older games as well is the uh, I'm going to move I'm going to move the analog stick right and it's going to go that way and I'm like Arr! that's wrong and I can't fix it uh, I can't fix that so that's going to be impo oh my god I could remap the controls maybe like that's you know with an emulator you can kind of sometimes fix that stuff Nevin I have fashioned these drones to be harmless. When you dispatch them, they will keep respawning so that you can practice using your sword. Uh, okay. Let's, let's try. Let me, uh, let me go to my... Okay, we're gonna... <laughs> All right, we have mapped left to right and right to left. There. Now that's a video game. Okay, this is still...
This suit is incredible. It's like wearing adrenaline. The bio circuitry is so advanced. I like the so difference in audio fidelity between actually did it. He created the cutscenes kind of and the in-engine. Hiya! Hiya! This suit is made of right echoplast. Yes, from my flesh it is made. From your what? There is more. To Have you never heard of the, the word flesh before? Who are you? Here we go, just a straight up launcher. Boom. Ah. Alright, this I Father has a presence here. You will see how he uses Echo Blast to hurt. Who's this father? Father hurts. You have parental issues? One of Pavo's standard combat models, a plastid. Oh, it's weird that you know that. Jumping attack doesn't quite do what you want it to do. When you think about what you want this launcher, what you want the follow-up to this launcher to look like, it kind of doesn't. It doesn't have that. Father has many defenses. The trap node is one of them. Who is this father you keep talking about? Once active, the trap node will spawn drones until its energy is depleted. Okay. Each drone will destroy the plates of the trap node's energy. When all its protective rings disappear, you may destroy it. Trap nodes usually control one or more force fields. Destroy the trap node. It's a little stiff. Like you can see, you know, like a, a looser version of this game within, in, 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 in like with the way that the attacks kind of string together. I think we probably. I did it. The trap notes. It destroyed. would still feel pretty good if it was just a Father little bit snappier, a little bit more freeform. Or rather, if, if attacks just cancelled into each other a little bit more more directly. I cannot resist you. Your flesh? The drones were made of echoplast, just like this suit you gave me. I am what father created. Okay. What, you're the echoplast? This health note. I didn't take any damage, but thanks. This still doesn't... The inverted pitch doesn't feel right, and this doesn't... And this doesn't feel right. I, I, well. Okay, when I push up, it goes like that. When it's on normal. 
And when I that doesn't it doesn't change. It doesn't change. The picture this this doesn't change anything. It doesn't it, it literally like I don't know what this is supposed to change, but it doesn't change anything. I'm losing my mind. Huh? Never saw anything like this on Proteus when I was trained here years ago. You have been here before. Tell me who you are. You must keep moving. Far does not know yet where to find you, but he is shaping an army of drones to hunt and kill you. Oh. Such hospitality. When do I get my complimentary mint? <laughs> you, that Nevin, he's such a wise cracker. Destroy Father's formats, or they will continue to make drones. Father has set up force fields across many important paths, blocking them all. Okay. Everyone needs a hobby, I guess. That's funny. Most are controlled by trap nodes, but some, like this one, can be deactivated by switches. A lot of stopping and starting in this game. You know, presumably it's because we're just getting started and, you know, it's got a lot of tutorial to convey, but... No fair. That one's got a gun. Bring it on. Gun guy trying to trying to slip away. Not cool, dude. a bunch of times in a row it feels like the suit is storing some kind of energy yes yeah when it does that together, you know plasm you got to get plasm later i will show you how to spend that energy to improve your suit i'm gonna level up this suit we're gonna get so much plasm dog Pretty uh, generous with the, you know, how long your combo timer goes here. Look, I'm not going any farther until you tell me who you are. I am the Echo Blast Nevin. I am all around you. Whoa. I am the walls of this room. The ground beneath your feet. Whoa! I am the suit you wear that I made for you from my flesh. Gross. That's impossible. Plas doesn't talk. When Father created Echoplas, he amplified its bio circuitry so much that it became something entirely new. You would best describe it as a nervous system, a huge living brain. Not even Pavo could pull that off. 
class can't think and it can't talk. I speak the truth, man. I am the Echo Blast. Whoa. Spawn node would make this a lot easier. Oh, thank you for. But think of all the currency I could farm by not destroying the spawn node. So what? Do, so do I need to lower this as much as I can? And then probably run across this way? Is that the... Oh, well, whatever. This works, too. What's the state of PlayStation 2 emulation these days? It's quite good. Uh, PCSX2 is a, is a really astounding emulator um and we've got retro achievement support here we can all right i've made it this far what have you got for me now a gift stand atop the dais to receive it uh what's a dais we were all thinking it nevin Gun form. From far away. I am going to be so slow in this thing. You are a shaper. You can reshape your suit at will. Oh, right. Sure. Easy as high? Wow. Just like that? Yes. I Get your shit you together, that. Nevin. Can't jump in gun form. And so the third form is like a wall, like a like a crawly stealth form. Hello, ladies. It's like someone on the team of Valvinus fan? What do we That grenade is not getting, uh, not doing much. Good. That's a pretty good morph effect, you know, for a freaking PlayStation 2. And granted, we're upresing the game here to a higher resolution than, you know, it had originally, but like, I. That looks pretty good.
Sometimes, in strategic places, I can create special veins of aeroplasts to increase your rate of fire. Strategic? Are we fighting a war or something? For practice, shoot the room's crystals. Oh, this is where we... This is where that invert access thing works. Move forward. The attack is over. This suit you shaped for me. Very impressive. It is pleasing to you. What did I just say? I would be a dick about it. So that's what you want to do. That is that is where the launcher starts to become useful. Is we can do that, morph, and then do that. So, you know. It's like Devil May Cry, but good, basically. <laughs> like a dog. The stealth form has many abilities. It's kind of degrading, isn't it? Is it flawed? Father was right. I am so weak and foolish. I'm sure stealth form is great. How about you show me what it can do? Aww. Why? It is flawed. Come on, show me. If you wish. Foremost among the self form's abilities is the pounce attack. That's neat. This glowing blue 
is a stealth pass. Stealth pass. Sometimes I can go to places to help you. It's like, you know, if you get magnet boots in another game and you can kind of, you know. I don't know, this creepy dog jumped on me and then it turned into a gunman. Uh, it was scary. And then he crawled up the stealth path. It was weird. Uh, you know this, this little perspective thing here? When father would deny you a path, pound snubs. Pound snubs. Pound snubs. If some, please write back. I showed you my pounce nub. You're kidding me. Try it. You want me to lick enemies to death? You know it. It's flawed. No, no, it's it's great. I love it. That's just, that should be on the back of most video games. Try shooting juggled enemies in midair. Oh. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to do, we want to lick them in, launch them up, turn into the gun, and shoot. video game stuff if you say so Were those pounce nubs? There was health up there. I... Looks like I can drop down on the... There. There's probably a switch to disable those turrets now that I think about it. There was another, uh, like, crawly path. 
That's handy. I feel like a big frog. It is time to learn more of the bio-circuitry of Echoplast now. I'm gay. Finally, some lore. I've never seen anything like this. I don't understand. The bio-circuitry of regular multiplast was microscopic. Uh-huh. This is... My nervous system. A vast network of amplified bio-circuitry branching out across the face of this planet. Yeah, Nevin will be 2,400 Call of Duty points when he comes to... Next year's game. The Alter Echo Pack. My major nerve fighters run underground. Those that I control are going He's got such hot lines as... Loading a fresh mag! ...his will whenever he chooses. Throwing a grenade. His control fall to shadow, suffused with darkness, the gloom of father's mind. In some places, my biosecretary extrudes from the ground like exposed nerve endings. Such points are called sync nodes. You must learn to use them and gain control of the echoplast yourself. Because you are a shaper, you can use sync nodes to take control of the echoplast biocircuitry and shape it to your will. When you join with a sync node, your consciousness enters the biocircuitry grid. Uh -huh. Your goal is to guide your impulse to a source icon. Use the action buttons to guide your chain up, down, and left, right. They just think that that would be edgier than using the D-pad. pulse frequency, you must time each press according to when the timing icons come together. Oh, right. It's kind of like a rhythm the game, too. The bar will help you get the hang of this. You need to press the buttons while the slider is in the I'll get my dance mat out. Usually, you must channel your will down a specific path. The source icon. Guide your chain to it, and your consciousness will take control of the echoplast. Now you may shape it to your will. This 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 advantage. tutorial was so heavy they had to stop all the music and be like, no, we pre-rendered a video for this because we need button night, we need to show the controller, like there's a whole thing. Control over the biocircuitry to place greater obstacles in your way. Open your mind now. Open. Whoa, just like I imagined it. I've never shaped something so big so easily. Echoplast is much more receptive to the will of a shaper, especially when manipulated from the sync node. Everyone knows this. What's happening? Father is coming. Do I sense a disturbance here? A sync node plucked from my mind's embrace. Have you disobeyed me, my echo? Have you given sanctuary to this weakling? He is a shaper, father. One who does not fear. I love him. Silence. You do not fear me. Must I convince you? I'm having Nevin's hey, baby, I and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Retreat across the bridge, Nevin. There are too many enemies to face here. Wait, am I supposed to go back? Yes, coward. Run away. Okay. <laughs> This is, it, this, um, I'm having a good time playing this. It, it's, it's overly straightforward, right? I mean, the start and stop of the tutorial has been really, um, 
you know, the, the pacing of the, of that. You probably wouldn't do that today. If you were making these same choices again today, yeah. you would probably do something a little different about it. Never. But, What's uh, this with you setting me up against Pavo? You sensed his malice and cruelty. Please help free me. I'm just one guy. This father of yours is the greatest shaper of all time. This battle suit may be nice, but what's my edge on him? Nothing. You're prettier there than is father. One thing father does not understand. A secret of the Echoblast. The ability to alter time itself. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking what, Your man? Your Echoblast suit can be used to alter time and launch fierce attacks. Here is how. First, you need time dilation energy, which you get by collecting power-ups. Uh-huh, power-ups, got it. To enter time dilation, press the R3 button. Okay. I wonder what that said on Xbox. Push the white icon. button. Your goal is to build a chain of attacks that will strike as many as possible. Use the action buttons to guide your attack chain. Up, down, and left, right. You have to time each press according to when the icons come together. The timing bar will help you get the hang of this. You need to press the buttons while the slider is in the middle zone. Guide your chain through the target icons. The longer your chain, the more damage you do to the targets you hit. Okay. Icons at the top of the screen track the status of your enemies. If your chain does enough damage to kill an opponent, a skull will appear, <laughs> indicating death. Sick. Once you've done enough damage to kill every opponent, time dilation ends, and you carry out your attacks in suspended time. Your enemies unable to strike back. Those are the basics. Be sure to practice them. You will use the same skills to time dilate in gun and stealth forms. Anytime you wish to experience this teaching again, it is available to you. Fine punishment. It's Interesting that those run at sixty, but the rest of the game runs at thirty. Time like that. How is that possible? The path ahead will require you to use every skill you have learned so far. Okay, it's not like I have any choice. Oh, you can also use the D-pad, by the way. A lot of just text on the screen like, hey, this is available in the pause menu if you want to see it again type stuff in this game that like, especially in the early goings, like it feels like uh, they slapped on some extra like tutorializing here. As the screen says, sick multi slash. It auto aims just well enough to make this uh, work pretty well. Okay. 
That's not a crawly bit, is it? No, that's just decoration. I need more firepower. Oh, that's the, that's a, a turret point. Right? Oh. I have to fire a grenade missile. That's not a thing. Is it a grenade or a missile? Not what I'm... It just said to hold down L2 to absorb bullets. And you hear this charge up noise that's happening here. I guess maybe I just need to kill these guys. I thought it, I thought they were going to respawn infinitely for me to do something, but but perhaps not. Turns out it had nothing to do with the weird grenade thing. Let's get to Kreblin. How do I? Oh, wait. I probably have to go on that this stand over here and then work my way over, huh? I'm gonna have to. Well, great. Well, I'm glad we made it up here. Anyway, that's Alter Echo. It, it's, uh...
this is a game I've been thinking about a lot lately. Like this era. These guys that need you gotta go invisible for these guys. Oh, can't turn invisible, don't have enough juice. You have died. That's a nice fast restart, I'll say. Wait, how far back is this? No, this is oh, okay. Yeah, this is not great. <laughs> What's this with you setting me up against Pavo? Better checkpoints if you were if you were making this game today. Better exactly. checkpoints would be a would be a thing you I'm would just do. Just one guy. Uh. You know, it's it's a weird thing to, like, pine for, I suppose. But there is a certain aspect of, like, man, they just don't make games like that anymore. You know? And... Games like that felt like they were a dime a dozen back on the PlayStation 2. Like, that's, you know, whenever whenever I would talk about the notion of a B game, I think that's exactly a stereotypical game that fits in that slot, right? Of just like, this is like, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's a standard action game. You see that it's derivative of some things, but it certainly has some mechanics that it's, you know, bringing to the fore that it's like, okay, here, here's our tw twist on this style of, of combat or this, this style of thing. And we had some weird ideas that we threw in here also and, and, and whatever else, you know, and it comes out and you go like, oh, this is fine. This is like, what is it? Some kind of mid seven. Like a mid six to a mid eight, right? Depending on, <laughs> you know, a bunch of other factors around the quality of, of, the visuals and how well they kind of pull it off and, and whatever else, right? But it, but it, there's just... I don't know. This game's just uh, kind of don't exist anymore. And the, the you know, a lot of people talk about indie gaming getting bigger. And as it got bigger, that's where that triple I... This triple I initiative thing that just happened, which is like a, a silly use of the name considering the games that they showed. Um... Like, it's not the first time the term triple I has been thrown around. It, it, it always meant, like, the kind of, like, big, high-class, high-ticket, expensive indie games. Um, and I've heard it used in, in business contexts for, for a little bit. Uh, it's always silly, but... But those games aren't these games, and I don't know. It, it's... These games also, they charged full price for them, and, and so maybe that wouldn't go down well these days, and, and you know, things have changed, and... The bar is higher, blah, blah, blah. You know, there are, I think, a, a ton of reasons why you would look at something like this and go like, yeah, you know, this, games like this kind of went away for a reason. Um, you don't just have, like, games that are just, like, genre hits anymore, I guess. Just like, or, or not hits, but, like, genre fair. Fans of the genre will like this game. If you just like some action-y kind of action game, Alter Echo is totally cool, man. For what it is, you could do a lot worse. 
If you're looking for a new, and, and because all these games were primarily single player back in the day, kind of fire and forget, play them, finish them, move on. You were always looking for something new. You didn't have a bunch of games being like, oh, well, season three just started and now you've got another hundred levels of battle pass to grind out. So get to work, dumbass. Like, you know, you, you just kind of have a lot of games that, that were meant to just be played and finished and, and, you know, like because people who played games needed games to play and they would buy them or rent them in some cases. But uh, I don't know. It, it's it's just a it's a weird thing that it feels like it is missing from today's games, you know. Um, and maybe that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe overall, like you know, net net, we're better off for it or something. But um, But this is like, th this is an era that I get kind of like nostalgic for in a general sense, as opposed to individual games. It's more just like, it always felt like there was something new to try on the PS2 that you, you know, that was like a substantial chunk of a game that still had the look and feel of the big games, just not done quite as well in some cases. And now, you know, like for as much as the divide has sh shrank a little bit, it, it hasn't really, you know, we, now we have the ultra big quadruple, you know, the, the, the too big to fail massive franchise games. And some of those have become the, the big old service games on top of that. And they're like, okay, well, we've got to try to monetize the teens. And then you've got indie games, which have a different budget, different look, different feel. And they're kind of chasing different goals. Or as much as like the big indie games will sometimes kind of ape aspects, uh, which someone in the chat kind of pointed out, like that that they are are trying to kind of go after what modern big games are doing as well. There's still this missing middle ground that we don't get anymore, and the publishers for those games just don't exist anymore. And it's a weird thing because I, I don't know that I don't know that anyone was thinking about it back then that way in terms of just like, well, we're not making, but, but maybe they were, I don't know. Like, Hey, we're not making the next halo. We're not making, making the next God of war. We're making a pretty good shooter that we think is, is cool. And it's got its own thing going on for it. And if you put it up against a lot of the other shooters from a lot of these other third parties out here, we think it's going to, you know, it's going to be better than those or more desirable than, than those. But yes, we're not the big Q4, uh, game of the year, blah, 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 first party release. But the publishers for those games just aren't around anymore. THQ, Midway, uh, Infogrom, I guess, maybe did some of that stuff. Uh, certainly, I think Ubisoft was in that bucket back then. Uh, less so these days. I don't know what bucket to put Ubisoft in these days. They're such a weird company. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird thing to kind of pine for, I suppose, because I'm not, you know, going to sit here and tell you Alter Echo is an amazing hidden gem. Like, th there's cool shit going on in that game. And uh, it was not, a it, you know, e even at release, it was still like a cool thing. It wasn't something that you, you know, only came to later and, and, and respected when it came out. I was like, yeah, this is a, yeah. If, if you like games like this, you'll like this game. Hey, you could do a lot worse than this or psyops or, or, you know, well, psyops is great. Or like the suffering. We were talking about the suffering on the podcast yesterday. Um, stranglehold. Though at the same time, you know, I think the publishers behind those games didn't always think that they were making games that would fall into that tier, you know, and be thought of as a B game. Like, I know there were folks that had high hopes for a game like Stranglehold, uh, that it would, that it would do more than it probably did. Um, I wrote off Stranglehold pretty directly back when it came out, and it's a game I think about a lot in terms of, like, I should give that game another chance. Because at the time I remember playing it as being like, oh, why would I, you know, like, 
could couldn't I just be playing Max Payne or whatever? You know, couldn't I just be playing like the the re, the better version of this or or whatever? Um, and uh, yeah, some people in chat are saying that it doesn't really hold up, but I, I don't hold it in especially high regard. So so I think like I would probably come to it and maybe appreciate it more than I did then. That's my guess anyway. Um, but yeah, it's just a. Uh, It was a different time. I think that's all you can really say about it is, is, you know what? It was a different time. Is this just going to work or do I need to re-grab it? I might need to re-grab it. Let's do. Okay. No, there we go. Speaking of it was a different time. SOCOM 2. Yeah, let me go get my headset and put that on. You could give orders to your AI companions via the headset in the campaign mode of SOCOM, and it was like always kind of a neat idea. But you know what else is a neat idea? This. DNAS was a thing that they put unique codes onto every copy of a disk, and so each disk had its own serial number uh, that they could use to kind of ban people and, and whatever else. It appears that we have 16 players online. Did you know you could do this? You can do this. It's really easy to do this, by the way. Uh, you can do it on real hardware as well. You have to, you know, make some modifications. Uh, th this will not go well. I'll, I'll tell you up front here, if you are thinking about, if you were seeing this and saying, oh shit, what am I doing with my life that I'm not playing SOCOM 2 online? Let me tell you. A couple of things. One, this game, kind of hard to go back to. <laughs> in, in a few, in a few ways. The other thing I'll say is uh, the players who are sticking around playing SOCOM 2 on custom servers are ruthless. Sure enough, as soon as we connected, was someone saying, 
basically saying to green the fuck up. It's real good. Yeah, do you think all of these people are playing? <laughs> people in chat have a very uh, solid opinion of the people that are <laughs> that are playing SOCOM 2 online in 2024. Are they uh, are they playing this while wearing Oakley blades while sitting in the front seat of a pickup truck? Is that is that the vibe we're And I don't, I don't remember the controls well enough to... Okay, here. We can get down here. The bomb has been picked up. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Going, man. Oh, so yeah, there, there, uh, you can see the URL for whatever the, the website is for this stuff earlier when, when I was looking at the server messages. Um, Bomb planted. It's a pretty easy process. Their tutorials for getting it working on uh, current versions of the emulator are a little out of date. But the same basic concepts apply. You have to download a patch because they patched, they managed to patch this game and store the patch on your memory card. That's what Sony had to do back then. Of course, if you had the hard drive, you could also store that data there. Um, but because no one had the hard drive, they also had to make sure that their patches could fit in the on the size of a memory card, which is pretty crazy. So you'd jam the hard drive in there, oops, and you would... Uh, and then you would take the modem and screw it onto the back of your PS2 or the your ethernet adapter I suppose I can't remember what the jump button is square there it is you got to time it just right Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I, I bet I get shot right about here. Oh. Change loadouts. Anyway, I just wanted to quickly just show that this was possible. Um, that you can connect to these servers and there is still, there are still human beings playing SOCOM 2 online. And you can do that. Um, and you can do that. I think it, there are it, there are some hoops you can jump through as well to play Motorstorm, which is not a PS2 game, but uh, 
but I think the people have custom motor storm servers back up. There's a handful of games that they support right now. Um, did two have DLC maps? I want to say two had DLC maps. Um, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, PlayStation two emulation is quite good. <clears throat> quite good. You can play all the, all the hot games. Resident Evil Outbreak, yeah, yeah, that's, a lot of people played that, I don't remember that being, I don't remember ever liking that game, but it was cool that it existed. Street Arena. Uh, but I, I just, yeah, it's so cool that, you know, communities have, have kind of surfaced to keep some of these online games running and, and it's been happening for years. Obviously, Fantasy Star Online servers have been running for a long time. You guys like wrestling? You guys like pro wrestling? Here it is. Oh. The controls in this are really sluggish, like they don't work very well. It's like it's almost it is almost like it's not a good game. Yeah. Fuck. I'm a I'm an unsafe worker. This was a commercial game. It was sold. Not in this country. This, this game runs at 50 frames a second, which should tell you something. What's up? A countdown from 10. That's sure. What is this weird what fake sport they've made up?
Good, good. Oh no. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not super familiar with the Phoenix Games library. I, you know, I've seen. You no, know, there's a lot of weird budget stuff. But. Uh, but boy, oh boy. Took me to Suplex City. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at this doesn't change the way your controls work it just changes the camera which makes it way worse like Tekken 1 that way punches, man. Am I out of stamina? What's going on? Uh-oh. Chemist Tycoon. That sounds like a winner. So yeah, what I'm saying is that the PlayStation 2 is a wonderful platform with everything for everyone. One of the greatest gaming machines of all time, the PS2. Is it the greatest? Maybe. 
Shit, dude. Maybe. Maybe it is. I think if you know, it's it's. I think it's got to be either the PlayStation Two, the Super Nintendo, and I would put the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty in the running as well. I think that's got to be top three. Um, you know, PlayStation Two benefits from worldwide you know like like the the once you start importing games and looking at a full library i think that the playstation 2 just has so many esoteric games on it uh to check out uh that it's it's really playstation 1 kind of has that as well but like like ps2 the library is so bananas once you once you really start digging into it uh, the Xbox 360 didn't really have that Japanese support, but you know what it did for online play and what it did for kind of profiles and level system, you know, like, like the kind of centralized experience, I think goes a long way. And there are a lot of amazing Xbox 360 games. A lot of amazing games came out in that generation. And then the SNES is the SNES, you know, I don't know. Like it's, I don't know that I need to say too much about it, you know, let's say. The problem you run into when with those worldwide libraries is that you kind of, uh, you know, if you don't know Japanese, there's, you end up kind of fumbling your way through some games. And sometimes that can lead to you discovering weird gems that you would never would have looked at any other way uh, because you just fumbled your way through the menus and had a, a great time with it. Um, but sometimes, you know, there were just a lot of, a lot of games that you felt locked out from. And, you know, it's always the temptation is still there, but I don't know that it would really, I don't know. Learning what, like Katakana, you know, just like even, even just learning, learning that and not going any further than that would probably help quite a bit. Um, with some of those games anyway. Uh, But yeah, I don't know. And the PlayStation 2. It's magical in some ways. And uh, a heck of a platform. And uh, well emulated these days. So, you know, yeah, like I said, you can you can play SOCOM 2 against humans on the internet now. And that's fucking crazy. Uh, there are a lot of PS2 games that have retro achievements these days as well. So if you're into that thing, like the emulator has all that stuff built in there too. And, and you know, you can just log into your account and go. It's great. It's great. Um, that's going to do it for me here. I hope everyone has a solid rest of your Tuesday. Uh, when, Wednesday? Man. Ugh. Be back on Friday to rank some more 8-bit video games. Uh, if you are part of the Patreon the Revolution, uh, there's a brand new video up there. It's a couple hours uh, of me walking through a fresh MAME install and how to get that configured and tools you can use to kind of wrangle the games and get them where you need, where, where MAME expects them to be and, and get a good sense of like, what do you have? What are you missing? How to audit all of that stuff. Um, that's up there for patrons uh, of any tier right now. So go check that out. Patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman. Uh, and let me know what you think. Cause I've got additional installments kind of in the, the emulation vein in mind. I just want to make sure that I'm doing it right uh, for people or, or doing it useful for people. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me here. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in a couple of days.